All right, this will be an audio recording over the video. This is for the Quest 6 Freefall Quest. I'm going to work through all of the problems, and you can see the timestamps in the description. So the very first problem, uh, number one, we have a uh, an astronaut dropping a feather. Uh, we're told the height above the surface that it's dropped from. Mine was 3.9 meters. It's on the moon, and the acceleration on the moon is 1.64 meters per second squared. And then it asks for how long it will take for it to fall to the surface. Now we do know an additional piece of information. Since it's being dropped from rest, I know the initial speed is zero at the top. And then that 3.9 meters is going to be our displacement from its beginning position to the surface of the moon. There is an equation that has those things in it, the displacement, the acceleration, the initial velocity, and the time. So it's 1 half a t squared plus v i t. And then the delta x has the initial position already wrapped up in it so we don't put the initial position at the end. So we're solving for time. Since the VI is zero, we can just cross that part out. And we get that the uh, displacement is equal to 1 half AT squared. Moving everything away from the T, the 1 half out on the other side becomes a times two. And then we divide by A so we get 2 times the displacement divided by acceleration equals time squared. To get time by itself, we have to take a square root. So plug in our values. It becomes 2 times, got a little ahead of myself, 2 times the 3.9 meters divided by and we're picking down to be positive just so that we can keep our signs simple. Uh, our acceleration is 1.64 meters per second squared. Plug it into the calculator. And we get an answer of 2.18 approximately, maybe a one meters per, or seconds since it's time, it's seconds. All right, number two. We have a ball thrown straight up with an initial velocity. Mine is 30 meters per second. And then it asks, how high does it go? That would be a displacement from its initial position. We're on Earth. Uh, the, when it gets to its highest point, the, the velocity will be zero at its highest point. So that is something we could add. That isn't explicitly stated in the problem. And since we're on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. And we're asked to find that displacement. So we don't have time. So maybe the no time equation would work. That's VF squared equals VI squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. We'll move everything away from the displacement. So subtract VI squared, divide by two accelerations, and that equals the displacement. There is no final velocity if we use the top of the arc as our final position. So it just becomes negative VI squared, which is negative of 30 squared, divided by two times the negative 10 meters per second squared. 30 squared is 900. So the top becomes a negative 900 with units of meters squared over seconds squared. 
And then the bottom becomes a negative 20 meters per second squared. Most of the units cancel out, everything except for the one of the meters on top. So 900 divided by 20 since those negatives cancel and we get 45 meters. Okay, part three, or question three, which is part two of this series of questions, asks, how long is it in the air? And that's time. Well, we have a displacement now. We have our initial and final velocities to get to the top. We have an acceleration. We have a lot, of, or most things, so any equation that has a T in it would work. Let's use the VF equals VI plus A delta T equation and solve for T. Now, since we're using the VF of zero, that's at the top of the throw. This delta T is only going to be valid for half of the trip. Our initial velocity was 30, so it's negative 30 meters per second divided by the negative acceleration of 10 meters per second squared gives us a three second to get to the top of the throw. But we want to know for the total time in the air, which would be a round trip. So multiply the, the total time by, or the, round, the top time to the top by two, and we get six seconds. All right, moving on. Number four. We have a freely falling object. It's going to be released and fall for a total of 27 seconds. Since it's being released from rest, we know the initial velocity is zero. The time of fall is 27 seconds, so delta T is 27 seconds. We know we're on Earth, so we have an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, but we have to choose a coordinate system. So if we do choose down positive, we can leave our acceleration as positive. And then we're gonna find out, or we're looking to find uh, what's the velocity at the bottom. So we need an equation that has VI, A, delta T, and VF. So that's VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. The initial velocity at the top was zero, so it becomes our acceleration times our time. And that works out to be 270 meters per second. Now it asks for the speed, so this works out well because we need a positive answer for speed. Okay, number five. What's the average speed during the 27 seconds interval? Well, the average is symbolized by a bar above the V. If there was an arrow, it'd mean it was a vector. And in this case, velocity is a vector. So the bar is not an, representing a vector, it's representing an average. So that's V bar is equal to the initial plus the final velocities divided by two. It's the basic definition of average. So plug in our initial velocity of zero plus our final velocity of 270 and divide by two and we get an average of 135 meters per second. Okay, number six, how far did it fall during this time? That would be a displacement. 
we'll use our average velocity times time. That equation is valid regardless of if there's an acceleration or not. Since it's the average velocity and, and we have a uniform acceleration, then we can use it. So our average velocity of 30, 135 meters per second times the 27 seconds of fall that we were told at the very beginning and that gives us a, a very large displacement, 3,645 3, meters, which is like 3.6 kilometers. It's a very long fall. Okay, number seven. We have an object that shot vertically upwards into the air with an initial vol positive velocity. What correctly describes the velocity and the acceleration of the object when it gets to the top of its uh, arc or the, its highest elevation? Well, we're picking up positive because the velocity is at launch is positive. The acceleration is going to be slowing the ball down as it goes up, which means the acceleration has to be opposite the velocity. It comes to a rest at the top, and since the gravity doesn't turn off, the acceleration is still there, and it's downwards. So that means it's a negative acceleration. It has to be slowing the ball down on the way up. If we picked up as positive, the acceleration points down, and therefore it's negative. On Earth, it happens to be negative 10, but it doesn't matter. It's negative. So on my list of choices, I'd have a velocity of zero at the top and a negative acceleration. Number eight. During a baseball game, a batter hits a high pop-up. Uh, these are vertical problems. It's a straight up and down problem. We may draw it as if the ball travels sideways, but these are all completely vertical problems. Yes, talking, talking. Okay, so here's our picture. Person, batter, pop-up, starts at the batter, goes to a high point. It's going to get a time of flight of, and it tells us it remains in the air for 6.6 .6 seconds. So that's a round trip. It's 6.6 .6 seconds from the batter back to the batter. And then that means that the time to get to the top would be half of that. So for to get to the top, it's only 3.3 .3 seconds. We want to know how far above the batter it rises, so we're only looking at half of the trip. Now, the acceleration on Earth is 10, but the problem says to use 9.8. So we're going to use uh, an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. But we have to be careful with the sign. We have to choose a coordinate system, and that's going to determine if our acceleration is positive or negative, if our displacement is positive or negative, Time will always be positive, at least forward time will always be positive. So if we're choosing from the top of the throw or from the top down to the bottom, then we can pick our initial velocity to be zero. That is a trick. It allows us to add an additional value to our list of values. So the distance it falls for the second half of the trip will be equal to the distance it rose for the first half of the trip, and therefore we can do this trick. The equation that works would be displacement equals one half at squared plus vi delta t 
plus initial position, but the initial position is wrapped up in the delta. With the initial velocity zero, we can get rid of that term. And we're going to solve for delta x, so it's already in the correct form. Plugging in our values. We can choose down positive, so we'll leave our acceleration as positive. That's units of meters per second squared. And then our fall time is 3.3 seconds. And we have to square that. That's a number one problem people have with this equation. They forget to square the time. And we get an answer of 53. Uh, 0.36 meters. Now that was the distance that it fell from the top to the bottom. So that's the same as from the bottom to the top. That's the distance it rose at the first half of the trip. Okay, moving on. Number nine, the hot air balloon. We have a hot air balloon that's rising upwards with a, in a speed, a constant speed of 5.5 meters per second. When it's 18 meters above the ground, a package is released. It's released from rest with the balloon, but that doesn't mean it's released from rest with respect to the Earth. So it's going to fall 18 meters, and we're asked to find the amount of time that the package is in the air, the amount of time of the fall. So since the package was rising with the balloon, when it was released, it has the same upwards velocity as the balloon. So its initial velocity is 5.5 meters per second, assuming that we have a coordinate system of up positive. If we choose an up positive coordinate system, we're gonna to have to be careful with our 18 meters because the, the object falls 18 meters. So if our positive velocity is upwards, that means our displacement is going to be downwards. So we have to adjust our displacement to account for that direction. So we'll make it a negative 18 meters here eventually. Talking, talking, talking. Okay, here we go, negative 18 meters. Okay, so we have displacement, initial velocity. Um, we have an acceleration because we're on Earth. We have the acceleration due to gravity. It has to be downwards, so it's a negative because of our choice of coordinate systems. And I think that's enough to use the equation delta x equals 1 half at squared plus vi delta t. plus the displacement. Well, the displace, the uh, initial positions wrapped up in the displacement. Okay, we've got a t squared and a t and a displacement. None of these are gonna cancel out. So we're going to have to solve for t where t is buried in a quadratic. So let's get it into the correct form so that it, we can extract our a, b, and c for use in the quadratic formula. So it has to be in the form of everything equal to zero. And then we'll put our numbers in so we can actually calculate what our a, b, and c will be. Making sure our signs are correct. And then we have a minus of a displacement that's negative, so that'll become a positive value. 
and that's equal to zero. So now we identify our A, B, S, and C's. So that one half times 9.8 negative becomes a minus 4.9. picky about how it looks and that's in front of our square term the 5.5 is still just 5.5 and then the negatives cancel to give us the constant of positive 18 and that's equal to zero and so now let's identify a b and C for use in the quadratic formula. Now I think I've got this right. Minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then we plug in our values, crank it out. We'll get two answers because of the plus minus. Or we'll use a quadratic so formula solver program. Where we can just type in A, B, and C, and it will spit out the two answers, the two roots. So for our A, we had a minus 4.9. For our B, we had positive 5.5. And for our C, we had a positive 18, I think it was, yep. That gives us two roots, two possible answers, a positive answer and a negative answer, where the positive is 2.558 and the negative is 1.436. And since we're solving for time, those would have seconds for units. Going back to the document camera, I think. Yep. Now, what's the relation? Why Why is one positive and one negative? What does that, what meaning does that have for this problem? Well, let's graph the position, the vertical position or altitude versus time. So at time zero, the object is, starts at a height or an altitude of 18 meters. And then as time advances, it goes up and then back down again. So we'll mark off some times, and then it goes up and back down again. However, when does it reach the ground? At what time would it reach the ground? Well, that's the positive time from our two roots. So it reaches the ground at 2.58, or approximately 2.58. So scale the axis such that our parabola hits the time axis at 2.58 seconds or 2.558 seconds. Well, what about the negative answer then? What would that represent? Well, that's backwards in time. So in, instead of being dropped from the balloon, at what time would it have to have been launched from the ground, the altitude of zero, such that it would have followed the exact same trajectory and landed at positive 2.558 seconds in the future? Well, it would have had to have been launched back in the past at negative 1.436 seconds. And then it would have followed that same path that the one that was let go from the balloon would have followed. So, but we care about the one launched from the balloon or let go from the balloon. So the positive one is our solution. So that's how much time it's in the air from when it's released from the balloon till when it strikes the ground. I really like this series of questions because it points out some really fun consequences of projectile or free fall motion and projectile motion. Uh, so 
Number 10, what's the speed just before it hits the ground? We're going to do vertical motion so it falls straight down. We only care about how it's speeding up because of acceleration. We know its initial velocity when it was let go was up. Acceleration is going to make it slow down, come to a stop, and then come back down to the earth. And we can, we know everything. We know time, initial velocity. We could choose any equation that has time and, and final velocity in it. So we basically have our choice of equations. We'll just pick the easiest one. And that's the final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We have a positive initial velocity of 5.5, uh, an acceleration downwards of 9.8, and our answer from the previous problem, the time in the air. So plug all those into our equation, and we get how fast the object is traveling when it hits the ground. We again chose up positive. So we would expect the answer to be downwards once we get our final answer. This would be a good check to see if our answer is reasonable. If we get a negative answer for velocity, then it's a good sign that we did it right. It should be in there long enough such that it reverses direction and heads downwards. So after plugging, typing in the calculator, you can almost hear it. Type, 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 type. Oop, made an error, got it back, go back. Oh, we got an answer. Negative 19.57 meters per second. So that's the velocity downwards. But the question asks for speed. What's the speed just before impact? And speeds are positive. So we're going to convert that into a positive answer for speed. Okay, so that was number 10. Make it look pretty. Okay, the next one... Well, it's a continuation of this series of questions. Number 11 is part three. Now this is, I really like this. Let's, it wants to know what is the vertical velocity if the balloon is now, or I'm sorry, how long is it in the air? If the balloon is now going downwards at 5.5 meters per second. So you would think that the, uh, you'd have to work it all out again. But if you're clever, you might realize we already have the answer. And it's all because of the symmetry of free fall motion. But let's work it out just to show that it does work out to be what we think it might work out to be. So this time we have a downwards 5.5 meters per second. So if we choose up positive, we have uh, initial downwards velocity. We have the same height that it's released from, so 18 meters. So our package starts out with a VI of negative 5.5. And it's going to go straight down, speeding up faster and faster as it goes. So it's, it's almost like you're throwing the object downwards to start with. And we want to find the time. We have our Earth acceleration. So always try to uh, visualize or conceptualize the question so you can get as many pieces of information before attempting a solution as you can. It's not necess the problems aren't necessarily going to tell you everything, like, oh, you're on Earth, use the acceleration of 9.8. But anyways, so using our up positive, we'll use the exact same equation that we did before. 
our displacement is equal to one half at squared plus the vi t and there's no xi because it's wrapped up in the delta x and our we're, we're going to get our t squared our t and our constant again so we're going to have to arrange our equation such that it fits the correct form for the quadratic formula so we'll move the xi to the same side as everything else or the delta x to the same side as everything else so it's equal to zero and we'll put in our values so we can figure out what our a b and c are so i'm just basically showing my work we have a negative of a negative again so our C is going to be a positive value. So we get the same 4.9 negative for our A value. Uh, we get a negative 5.5, so this is different from our original B value. And then we get our same C value of 18. So that's our A. Our B is now negative. And then our C is the same. So we could plug it into our quadratic formula, calculate it out by hand, making sure to do the plus and the minus because there's two answers. But instead, let's use the quadratic formula solver online. And everything is pretty much the same, except for the middle term is now negative. And all that does is flips the signs on the two roots. So now we have a negative 2.558 second and a positive 1.35 or 1.4358. And because again, we're looking forward in time, if we graph the position, the altitude versus time, in this case, we've got the launch downwards part of the parabola in positive time. So that's the, it's already got a downward slope when it's at time equals zero. And it hits the ground at the 1.4 second mark. Approximately 1.4. But then there's the backwards in time part of the parabola. It still is going up and then it arcs downwards and indicate that it was back in time. I'll use red. This is before time equals zero. And again, this has the same interpretation. It's the time in the past that you would have launched from ground level such that it would follow the same trajectory if you started your time when it was at 18 meters above the ground. So no balloon required. So we'll choose the positive version, the one where we have the balloon and notice it's exactly the same values, just with the signs flipped. So this is all due to the symmetry of, of free fall motion and projectile motion. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So now we're moving on, I hope, to... Um, Bursting the bubble. No, we have the speed question yet. Number 12. I think that was 11. Yep. All right. Number 12. 
this is fun. This is cool. Okay, so you would think since we're launching the balloon downwards that it's going to hit the ground at an even faster speed because it's you threw it downwards. You know, you're at the same height, and if you, ex if you throw something downwards versus throwing it upwards, you would think it would, you know, be hit the ground faster. Didn't you throw it downwards? Well, let's see. We're going to work it out just to find out. And if you're clever, maybe you'd have some insight on this. Okay. We have all of our initial conditions. It was thrown downwards at 5.5 meters per second. Our time in the air, we know, is 1.4359 seconds, which is smaller than if it was thrown upwards. Uh, the acceleration is down because of gravity, and it's 9.8 because we're on Earth. And then we could use a simple equation that has just acceleration, time, and initial velocity to get our final velocity. Might as well use a simple one. So we get negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the shorter time in the air, because this is the downwards throw, or downwards launch, I should say. And then it was moving downwards to start with, so we have an initial velocity downwards of 5.5. And if we calculate it out, type, 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 clickety click. Look at them go, type, type, type. We get a downwards velocity of 19.57 meters per second. It asks for speed, so we're going to have to go positive for the answer. But now for the really cool part. Compare that with what we got from when the balloon was heading upwards to start with. It's the same speed. So what that says is it didn't matter whether you uh, were going up with the balloon or down with the balloon at that height. The package hits the ground at the same speed, which I find fun. I think it's a cool feature. Yeah. And it's because of the symmetry of, of accelerated motion. Okay, number 13. So you want to find out how high to pitch a water balloon. So we're going to be throwing the balloon straight up and down. Um, I draw it as if you were in a hallway and you're pitching a balloon through the hallway to a height such that you know it's going to burst when it gets to the ground. And you find that that height, the height of the, of the balloon has to be 18 meters so that by the time it gets, it gets back to the ground, it, it'll burst. It turns out to be a very tall hallway. We're looking to see what velocity it hits the ground with. So we're solving for V final. We know our height from the top of the arc or the top of the throw to the ground. So our delta x is going to be 18 meters. And since it's going straight up and down, we'll use the horizontal to indicate time. At the top of the throw, the initial or the velocity is zero. So we could say that our initial velocity is zero if we just take the second half of the trip or the, the part of the trip from the top to the floor. And the x-axis stands for time. So what's the final velocity at the floor? Well, we have initial velocity, displacement, final velocity, and acceleration because we're on the Earth, 
So we could use the no time equation and solve for the final velocity. I didn't write the acceleration in, but we do know what it is. It's gravity on Earth. And our equation's already set up to solve for final velocity. All we would have to do is take a square root. The vi is zero, so that just goes away. So we get the final velocity is the square root of two times the Earth's acceleration at the surface of the Earth, and then the displacement that it fell from. And since we're saying gravity is down, the displacement will have to be down too, since up is positive. So it becomes 2 times a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times a negative 18 meters of displacement. The negatives cancel, which is a good thing because of the square root. Now, that actually has a physical significance. If, they, if you go deeper, it's a, there's a reason why the two have to be negative under the square root. And it's going to get you a positive answer. However, if you worked backwards and found the VF squared, that means that this side of the equation could be positive or negative. Now, up was positive, and we're going to act as physicists here. We know that the ball has to, or balloon has to be going down at the end. So as physicists, we'll assign a value. We'll assign down to the balloon. So we'll give it a negative 18.783 meters per second velocity at the when it right before it hits the ground. All right.